Hello everyone, welcome to another Roblox game development tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to continue working on our Abbey spawns. In fact, today what we're going to do is make it so that when you step on one, it actually switches over and gives you number one as your stage in the leader stats. That's what we're going to work on today. Now, a lot of times you guys would think maybe we should make a script go into explore by the way for in each of these bricks right no 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 that's what this model is for it's to make this so much easier alright we're going to insert a script into this model in this script we're going to go uh, we're going to get script dot parent uh, get children and we're actually gonna have to go over here alright now for this we're going to use a loop we've never used before in this series it's the for i in v loop it's similar to the for loop except instead of having to reference i all the time we actually only, only reference v and instead of it being a number it is actually the object in that part of the array at that number. So what we're going to write is for i v in i pairs, alright, you gotta spell it right, and wrap this, okay, i pairs is a function, alright, this function takes an array. This iv I'll explain in a second, but in i pairs just know that iv is in. Alright, so I, V, in I pairs means it's in this array, this I pairs loop. Alright, and then we're going to put do, end. Alright, now V, alright, I is still the index. You can make I and V whatever the heck name you want. You can make V antelope, or I you can make... I don't know YouTube like what you're watching this on it doesn't matter you could do that but IV is just the standard way of doing this okay so for I V in pairs do and the or in I pairs I think in pairs was deprecated I might be wrong um, but I in I pairs will work just fine for this. I can explain the difference at a later point in time. Um, in I pairs do, and remember you put script dot parent get children in here. So what we would normally do in a for loop is we we would say something like uh, child equals um, like if we had a variable up here that was stuff equals script that parent get children and then we would have and we did a for loop of for i equals one number stuff do and we just completely ignore this line real quick if we were to do that we would have child equals stuff i right that's what we would do but the thing is in this, V is that child. So we can actually do for I child in I pairs. All right, this is what you name it. That makes this in completely useless because it's already that number. It's already referencing to that. So we're going to keep it V, but just know that if we were to do it the other way, it would be the exact same thing this is just another way of doing it and I thought how have I not showed them this yet this far a hundred and something episodes into this series and then I realized oh that's right because I didn't even know how to work a for I V and I pairs loop until like a month ago alright so we're going to do that today it's extremely simple though don't be scared by it alright it's for I that's still the index if you know what, before we even get before we even get started in this, we're just gonna print I um, throughout all this loop, and then we're also going to print a equal sign 
and in that same print, we're going to print v that name. All right. So now I'm just gonna press F6 because this script will still work in just a play solo mode, and I'm just going to press that real quick. We don't need our stage right now. I just want you guys look down here at output. All right. One is still equal to one. Two and three, those are all the eyes, right? The, not eyes like what we see out of, but I like the letter in the alphabet. Okay, that's I, our variable I in all three of its iterations. And zero is the name of the first child in that thing. If you look back up here, zero is this brick. That's the name of this brick, right? Because, okay, go into explore. That's the name of this brick. And then one is the name of this other brick. All right? So those aren't just random numbers. So I equals a V. I equals a V. I equals a V. Okay? I hope I've got... I've spent a ton of time just trying to explain that for I, V, in pairs. I want to make this super simple for you guys. All right? V is the actual child, so we don't have to do child equals uh, sum array i, okay? It's the actual thing right there. We It basically just saves us two lines of code to do it this way, all right? That's what we're doing here. So, now that we've done that, I'll keep the print i thing right now. But we're also going to do if v dot class name does or yeah does not equal actually no equals equals part then because this what we're about to write can only work for a part and remember v is the ch in this particular instance it's every time we loop through it it's the particular child in the, the abysmons all right and that will include the script so that's why we're making sure we check that it's a part because we have a lot of stuff only parts can do here okay so if v that class name equals equals part make sure it's a part after that we go v dot or um, after that we go v dot touched connect function hit all right we're we're making a function inside of a for loop it's still just as effective functions in Lua are actually variables okay so we could make functions inside functions we could do make function inception it'd be a local function it couldn't be called anywhere else in the script but inside that function but that's just because of how Lua works I'll explain all of this stuff maybe later uh, I really should have done it earlier but I didn't understand it earlier I just started realizing all of these concepts a few months ago myself and I just thought there's no way I can teach this to them right now it, it wouldn't go along with the series but scrap that after we're done with these obvious ones I'm going to teach you guys a couple more basic fundamentals that are so important they've made me a million times better of a scripter just since I found them out alright so let's continue v dot touch connect function hit if hit dot parent find first child we've done all this stuff before guys humanoid and game dot players get player from character hit that parent and actually we're gonna make char like we normally do char equal sorry guys I had a uh, sneeze attack as I was typing that yay alright switch that to char real quick I've already gone over this stuff countless times then player equals game that players get player from character char but here's a line we haven't normally done. Think about this in an obby. You are so close to the end at a lava checkers uh, obstacle. You're so close to the end, and then you hit the brick on your last jump. 
all your momentum is headed towards that uh, final platform where it's safe, but you just the corner of your leg hits that lava brick and you go dying and spilling out all of your limbs, all of your different body parts, your hats, your tools, everything just goes crazy. But one of your arms touches that brick. Well, right now, if we just continued and changed their stage, they would actually be just fine. They would get back to that stage. They would have passed up the checkers. It would have changed. What we're about to do is make sure that they're still alive. Alright? That's what we're making sure of right now. So, if char.humanoid.health is greater than zero, then player.leaderStat and one more thing, if, what if they were going back to help a friend and they went backwards through your obstacles? Do they want to lose their stage because they accidentally touch another stage thing? No. So we're also going to do if player.leaderStats.stage.value is greater than two number, I taught you guys this before, two number uh, v.name. Alright. Remember, V is the brick, or the part, because we already checked that it's a part, that they're stepping on. Zero or one right now. All right? V that name. Then, and that's why all of them have to be named sequentially, starting from zero all the way up to the very n biggest number of obstacles you have. They all have to be numbered. That Their name has to be a number for this script to work. If player that leader sets that stage shut value is greater than, or actually we need to make it is less than, sorry, is less than two number dot v or two number v dot name is less than, then player dot leader stats dot stage dot value equals two number v dot name, and that's our script. All right, I've gone over each and every part of this in full detail. We're 15 minutes into this episode. I haven't been so animated in an episode just trying to teach. I mean, I know. All right, so I had a lot of episodes where I had this crazy voice, and I was all like, hey, guys, what's up? You want to hang out or something? Because I... No. No, that, that was me just trying to find my voice to find who I should be on YouTube and I found out it's better if I'm just myself this is my voice guys this is why I always sound like okay this is the most animated I've been about something for a long time please understand everything I did it everything I taught today if you don't understand it don't feel afraid to message me on Roblox. Don't feel afraid to email me. Bballer13sntv at gmail.com Don't be afraid to comment below. I read almost every comment. As long as I get notified about it, which I think I have the settings set up to where I should, at least whenever a subscriber comments. I get every one of those. I look at them. I think if I need to reply, sometimes it's just somebody saying first comment or second comment. And it's like, yeah, I don't really need to reply to that. But I reply to almost every comment, guys. So please don't be afraid to do that. Alright? Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button. Corresponding to how I felt about this video. And I will catch you guys later.